All right, good to see you again. Now we are talking about branding and marketing and how to protect your brand. If you watch the previous episode, you know exactly why we need to trademark and protect our brand. Now, if you haven't, make sure you click on the i button and watch the previous episode. So Andre, let's continue the conversation. So we're talking about branding and, and why it's important. So from a trademarking perspective, a unique brand is better than a great brand because right. as long as you can own something mm -hmm. unique, that's great. Mm -hmm. But how do you actually come up with a great name, great tagline, great logo? Would you have any advice in that direction? I would say you need to look at, at least my own process, I look at what's out there in the marketplace, right? Mm -hmm. What are some of the brands that are out there? What are they saying? And then how can I come up with an angle that Maybe it's, so it could be very unique, could be like the opposite, depends on what I'm selling. But also it could be something that's a proven concept, but how can I add on to it? Mm -hmm. So one of the marks that now we own, which as you know, is our YouTube program. It's called Tube Yong Horn, yeah. right? So if you think about it, I take the concept of toot your own horn, which yeah. is promoting yourself. We know exactly right. what it means. If I talk to a friend, hey, you gotta, man, you're tooting your own horn. It means like I'm promoting myself. I'm shamelessly yeah. marketing myself. <laughs> I take that word, I simply change it to tube, which is then symbolize YouTube. Yeah. So there you go. That's a very memorable name. Right? Yeah. Uh, something like that. So, taking an assisting idea, uh, something that's a cliche or something, a metaphor, something that's very common mm -hmm. that most people know. And I just change it a couple words. Or sometimes, another way you can combine words together. Right. Right? Combine the two words, two different words together, yeah. and you have a very unique word, right? But it's not so much just you come up with a, like a cute name. Having a cute name, that's not going to build your business. No. But having a, a name that's memorable, it's easier for people to remember your brand. So when they do see your brand again, they see your logo again, oh yeah, I've seen that a couple of times. And then hopefully that would get them to come back to you or, or be aware of your brand, right? Now that reminds me of what my father, who was a famous composer in Russia, used mm. to tell me. Actually, he's the reason I do intellectual property. Yes, yes. So he used to tell me, if you wrote music and it doesn't sound like anything out there, mm -hmm. it's crappy music because mm. people are not going to understand it. They're That's not right. going to love it. That's right. So it doesn't mean you shamelessly steal from others, mm. but it has to have some common point yes. that people could reference yes. and understand where you're coming from. So I guess the uh, tube your own horn is an amazing example of yep. how that works. Yes. Because it, you know, they get sends, it. sends a reminder to people and they're like, oh, I get it. I get it. I know, I know, yeah. I know kind of, even though I don't know what your company does, yeah. they, they, they can imagine. I think roughly yeah. Yeah. that's kind of what you do. Now, in terms of branding, you have a story where maybe a company, a brand that they've grown to a certain size, but they didn't trademark their name and then it ends up being a, a pretty bad story. Since, since, since we're in Vancouver, mm. uh, there was a local brand here that grew really big. There was, mm. a, there was called Van City Buzz. Mm. I know the unknown, I can't be into his office. Yeah, so there was a new news aggregator. Mm. I think they've been around for eight years, mm. building up a huge client base mm. over several hundred thousand people, which in Vancouver, which is a small place, mm. is, a, is, a, is a big deal. And uh, they realized that BuzzFeed, mm. another aggregator, mm. trademarked their brand in Canada. Mm. And once BuzzFeed got their trademark approved, mm. they reached out to Van City Buzz and said, hello, that's our name. Mm. And so Van City Buzz had to rebrand re mm. and they became Daily Hive. Mm. So all that marketing, all that goodwill that goodwill. they've built around the, the brand for, was gone. For many years. Like this. For many years. So imagine someone can come in and if they own the mark, they yeah. can do that to you. Also, you need to think about registering a trademark. It's not like getting a domain name. Yeah. It is not you go in, you type in the domain name, it's available, boom, you pay a couple bucks and you get the domain name. It's yeah. not like that. It is a, a process. Walk us through that process. Like how long usually does it take? Uh, how long, what's my expectation and time frame? Yeah, certainly not like a domain name. You should have both the domain name and the mm. trademark, but uh, trademarks take about a year and a half, two years mm. from start to finish. Mm. Sometimes it takes a little less, but you should not go into this expecting that it's going to take you a few months. Right. Probably 14, 18 months is, uh, is, is a good average to think about. Mm. And you file an application and then you sit and wait because the trademarks office is going to take them several months to even look at it first. Mm. 
and about seven out of 10 applications get uh, rejection initially. Mm. So the trademarks office finds something in there, they're like, no, we don't like it. Mm. And they explain to you, mm. and then you have to have somebody respond mm. uh, to them and either mm. fight it, explain why they're wrong and you're right, mm. or you come up with some ways to tweak it. Mm. And usually it's a combination so of so the that two. Would go through? This is where the real work begins. Yes. But it's, sometimes, you know, sometimes I always uh, tell people, because they're like, well, you know what, there's uh, so many companies you can file your trademark for next to nothing. Even you can file your trademark for next yeah, you could. You know, yeah. for yourself. And like a monkey can file your trademark application. Yeah. That's the easy part. The real work begins after you hear back from the trademarks often and then they say no. And you have to understand filing the trademark doesn't mean you own the trademark. Yeah. That's a it's big nothing. gap. It's filing, nothing. it's just you do the paperwork, you do it online, but then afterwards, the, the back and forth, right? Yeah, it means you say, I want to have this trademark. Yes. <laughs> That's all it, it means. It doesn't mean you have the trademark, right? Yeah. And it takes a long time yeah. and usually it takes longer than you think. So yeah. by the time you think you launch, you think you're gonna launch your product or service is in, in two, three, five, six months from now. Well, you gotta file your trademark. Now, explain to me, let's say I'm gonna launch a product mm -hmm. in, in six months. Right. And I know the, the, the trademark process takes like 12 to 18 months. Yeah. I file it today. Yeah. So does that mean I need to wait till I have the trademark before I start marketing? Or just in the process of filing my trademark, that gives me just even some form of protection. Well, that's a great question. So even though we said that once you file it, it you know, only means that you want to have this trademark, yeah. what it also means is that it's time stamped at the trademark's office. So nobody else mm. can come in and successfully register the same trademark after you did it. Mm. So you're the first in line, and yes, you have to go through the process to fully own it, mm. but the trademarks office is gonna stop everybody else who's trying to copy you mm. or come up with the same trademark. So what everyone else does, which is in the first episode I mentioned Uber, right? Mm. Two months before they launched. They filed a trademark, then they launched. They launched, yeah. And then it takes a little while for them to, to get it. Now they have the business and they have the brand. Got it. So with a product, same thing. Yes. File a trademark. Well, actually, let, let, me, let me take one step back. Make sure you can own the trademark. Yes, it's trademarkable. Right? If you just file a trademark, it doesn't mean anything. But if you've done your research and you know the chances of it going through, mm. then you file your trademark, right. then you launch the, the, the product oh. and, or, the, or the service or the program, whatever it is, and then you get the trademark. And actually, another thing I often tell my clients mm. is that just the fact that you file for a trademark, it shows the world that you're serious. Mm. shows commitment because like if you didn't think that you'd be in business, that you'd be around in two years, yes. you wouldn't be filing your trademark. Correct. So it goes to credibility. Yep. Credibility in your own eyes and also in the eyes of others because they see that you've bothered to file a trademark, that you're going to be around. And at first when I learned the lesson from being, you know, talk, being talked to, got this letter, like all this stack of you yeah. know, things being shut down basically. From that experience, then I learned about trademark, and I've used a number of like legal firms and things like that doing my first trademark. And one of the reasons myself why I have Andre Trademark Factory takes care of all my trademark is because the, what they charge, they're not cheap, but it's a flat fee. Versus yeah. I've used lawyers, legal firms, where they it feels like it's cheap, but it's not because they charge you per hour. So when they are talking with the, the trademark office back and forth, they were billing me for, oh, I craft a little letter, they bill me, right? Yeah. I got a phone call, they are billing me. I thought of your file. I thought of your file. <laughs> I open up your damn file, I, I'm billing you, right? Yeah. So it's all this stuff, I'm like, this is, I thought my budget is gonna cost me this much and it'll cost me this much. So with Andre, it's, it's always a flat fee. It's got a, a strong guarantee, right? Yeah. And I would, I feel very comfortable. It's, okay, here are all the trademarks I want, and I know that he would do his, his team would do very best to, to get me the trademark that I need. That to me gives me a lot of comfort as a as a business owner, right? So that's very very important for me personally. A second thing is it actually doesn't cost you as much as you think, because most people think oh to protect my brand, because they think in terms of protecting their brand, it's like a. Fortune 500 company thing, right? Oh, it's only for big corporation. I'm a small business, right? I own a little restaurant or, or I have a website. I don't need to protect my market. No, it doesn't cost you like tens of thousands of dollars or hundreds of thousands of dollars. Believe it or not, it only costs you a few thousand dollars. It depends on, on which country yep. that you want to protect your market. Actually, that's a good question. So it depends on where you want to do business. So you might want to file your mark in, let's say if you're doing business in the US, definitely US. 
uh, if you're planning to sell to Canada, you can file your trademark in Canada because owning that trademark in US, it doesn't give you protection in Canada. Yep. Someone can use the exact same name in Canada or different country where they are, they can use your name, yeah. right? And if you make physical products and you, for example, make them in China, mm. if you don't get a trademark in China and somebody else does, somebody that somebody who's got your trademark in China can stop you from exporting your products mm. from China. Mm -hmm. So you're stuck. You're gonna have to find a new manufacturer. So that's another trend we're noticing because believe it or not, uh, Canada, 50,000 trademarks filed every year. Yeah. US, 500,000 trademarks every 10 year. Times, but it's roughly the same, 10 times. In China, 7 million. Yes. 7 million trademarks filed every year. Mm. So there's a lot of crazy stuff happening there. And uh, if you're even thinking of building something in China, make sure you own the brand there. I'll give you a perfect example. If I remember correctly, Trump. Yeah. Right? Trump is trying to, of course, like different things that he does, you know, even before present, he's trying to get into China, do business, do development, all kinds of branding and licensing yeah. deal. But guess what? Someone else owns the trademark Trump. Some some guy yeah. owns the trademark Trump in China. So that it's preventing Trump from using his Trump brand in China. So you just imagine that, yeah. right? So that's a very real problem. So if you are planning to sell to, it doesn't matter if China or not, but different countries, you need to protect your mark in those countries, right? Yeah, I will say if it's an important source of revenue, mm. you gotta own the brand there. Mm. Simple as that. Home country plus all the other jurisdictions where it's important. Yes, where you think you're gonna expand there if you own yeah. an internet business. Uh, for me, of course, US, Canada, that's the, those are the main ones, right? That's the one we're always doing. Yeah, that's like the bare, like bare minimum amount of protection. So if you are thinking about growing your brand, not just the marketing strategies, because sometimes you get confused. People, what's the difference between branding and marketing? The way that I see it is, branding is your reputation. It is your, it's who you are, right? Your brand. Uh, it builds trust with, with the marketplace. Mm -hmm. Marketing is the, what you do, the, the ways, the, the strategies you use to, to bring in customers, right? To attract mm -hmm. customers and keep a customer. So you need both. Having a strong brand, and this is one lesson that I want to leave you with. Back then, when even when I was learning from my mentor, right, my first mentor, Alan, he is he believes in what I call direct response marketing. That's that school of thought, right? Mm -hmm. That it's about long form sales letter, right? It's ugly sales. It is about words. It's not about brand. You don't need fancy logo. You don't need, you know, fancy brochure. It's all about just direct response. So let's say what you see on TV. All the marketing you do, direct response marketing, is designed to get a response. I want, I want someone to pick up the phone to buy. I want someone to click on this button to buy, right? I want someone to, to send me back the, the order form. That's a direct response. I want a direct response from the consumer, right? And branding is all bullshit. That's the school of thought that I've been taught. What I realized is one day, I was reading all kinds of books and I've studied a lot of marketing books. Somehow I picked up a branding book. Mm. And that guy uh, is used to be a very high level executive for Coca-Cola. He was talking about branding. And I was like, this is fascinating. So you have two school of thought, right? Branding and, and, and direct response. All the direct response entrepreneurs, marketers, all kind of look down upon branding. You think this fancy shit just doesn't work. You don't, you, this, that, that's for big company, like small business, you don't need branding at all. And I was like, but if this is the truth, right? This is like what works. This is the most powerful like way of marketing. And it is very powerful. Shouldn't all these guys who are doing direct response be the richest biggest companies in the world, <laughs> yet they are not. But they might make a few million, tens of millions, yeah. but they're not making billions of dollars. However, the companies they're doing branding, yes, you have the, the biggest companies in the world. The Fortune 500 is all branding. So now I'm confused. Well, let me add to that. Yes. Why are you driving a Bentley? That's right. Why are you buying Tom Ford yes. suits? It's branding. It's the brand. It's the brand. It's right? not that the car itself is it's so 10 many times ta better. Yeah, yeah. No, it's, it's, no. It's part of a it's brand. It's the brand. It's the brand. So that, that's how we make decisions. That's exactly how I make decisions. So that tells me then, okay, there's something that this group of thought, this group, this group of marketers, they don't know. 
So then I started studying branding, mm -hmm. and I find it very very interesting. This is just my opinion. When you can combine this direct response with branding, you've got something very very powerful. Because when someone who doesn't know you, they need marketing. You need direct response to get them to buy to get to make a profit. This is the faster way to make money. Think of this as like a short term money, right? Yeah. But for someone who knows you, the brand that you're building, where it would help them to make that decision without thinking about it. Let me give you a perfect example. Then I rest my case. Let's say there are certain brands that you buy when you go to the supermarket, right? Maybe a certain it's 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 toothpaste, right? It's shampoo or it's certain types of coffee or whatever it is. Pretty much, you and I creatures have it. We go to the supermarket. We buy the same brands all the time. Yeah. In spite, there may be so many other choices. So new, sometimes you might try new things here and there, but usually you eat it by the same type of, of brand, the same type of product by the same company. Yeah. Why? Because you recognize the brand, you trust the brand, you, you shorten and basically eliminate that decision-making process. A brand, a powerful brand does that versus direct response every time you're trying to play the convincing game. Let me tell you why this offers the best. Let me tell you why you need to buy right now. Features, benefits. The, all, all the features, benefits, and that's powerful. That's all cooperating. But with a brand, they don't do any of that. You look at the most powerful brands. Yeah. They don't, like Bentley is not sending me a 30 page sales <laughs> letter convincing me why you need to buy a Bentley. No, if anything, it, they make it the opposite. Yeah. I want to buy a Bentley. You got to wait three months. What, what do you mean I need to wait for three months, right? You know, you wait if the, the model that you want, the color you want, the tier that you want. It's so difficult, right? Or you want to buy a Ferrari, right? Yeah. You, you can't just walk in and want certain type of Ferrari. No, you got to wait. I got to wait. It, it's a very different thing. So you think about direct responses like push and branding it's pull. So that's my school of thought, right? You can combine the two. And I think that's why they say first you work for the brand. Yes. And then the brand works the brand for you. Works for you. Exactly this. It's exactly this. And now, of course, I'm such a big proponent of like personal branding, that the power of personal brand just by, think about Air Jordan, Nike. It's a pair of shoes, but when you add that personal brand with a perfect like an athlete who is the, the, the idealistic person that people look up to, yeah. from there, Air Jordan, of course, you know, I've got a bunch of Jordans, right? It's powerful, powerful. And so, even with your personal brand, mm. right? When you were starting out, everyone knows the story, right? Yes. When you're like, Dan who? Dan who, yeah. Right. Nobody's asking that now mm -hmm. because first you worked it's for the brand, brand and now the brand sells for you. The brand sells. It's just the name itself carries a lot of weight. That's why I trademark it. The yeah. brand itself gets me in the door. It, 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 it passes, to, it gets me through, through all the gatekeepers. In fact, at this point, it's more people approaching me than me approaching people. Right. But you can see as the brand becomes more popular, myself from experience, as it becomes more and more popular, things get easier. The cost of acquiring customers is lower. Uh, opportunities, it's more, it's more abundant. It's very, very powerful. Now, Andre, I want to do something special for my viewers. If they have any questions, I'll put a link somewhere on here or in the description. If you have questions about branding or you're thinking about should you trademark or can Andre Trademark Factory help you trademarking your brand and what's investment and all that stuff, click a link there. You can book a time with one of the Trademark Factory advisors. Yeah, right? all strategy advisors. All the strategy advisors and just looking at your brand, looking at business, what help do you need, right? I want to do this for you. Don't make the mistake that I made with my first brand where is I learned it the hard way. Good that it didn't actually cost me any money, but it could have cost me a lot of money. So branding, trademark, they are very, very important. If you're expecting you're gonna build a successful business, protect it today, don't delay, and don't wait till it's too late.